let's work with double integrals but in polar coordinates this time. Here's the review of formulas you need to know, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, tangent of theta is y over x, and the most important is the conversion between Cartesian or rectangle coordinates and polar coordinates. x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. So they gave me the integral, here it is. I immediately can see that e, so for you to know this is my function in 3D space z or f of x and y, minus x squared and minus y squared can immediately be converted into minus e to the minus r squared because of this formula. Let's call it formula number one. Number one, number two, number three. So using formula number one, we at least know that. We also know the formula for the integral. We need to find limits of integration, but it's, at some point you just know it's going to be, so if we call this f, x, and y, will be function, but the most important part is r, the r, the theta, like a pirate. So don't forget there is an r in the formula. Don't lose it or else some integration will not even work. Uh, this comes from the derivation of the integrals in polar coordinates or convergence of them from Cartesian to polar. Remember this formula, maybe sound like a funny pirate, but don't forget the r. So we need to find limits of integrations here. And as you can see, d theta is outside, so that's going to be angle outside, pi from something to something, or not pi, theta. r is in units like centimeters or feet, will be here inside, from something to something. So let's figure that out. It says that d is the region bounded by a semicircle and y-axis. Let's sketch the graph really fast. We are going to sketch 2D graph, so this is going to be a base of the cake standing in 3D, X and Y. It says that Y axis is bounding something, so that is my Y axis. Y axis can be written as X equals to 0. And then semicircle. What is a semicircle? Let's see. X equals a square root of 4 minus y squared. This is the same as x squared equals 4 minus y squared. Or x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. This is a full circle with the radius 2 centered at 0. Like so. But when I'm writing it as x equals square root, that makes the restriction that x have to be positive for 0. Positive for 0x is located over here, only on the right side. So I need to only include, let me change the color to something huge. I need to only include this side of the circle. It is a semicircle, right half of it. So together with uh, y axis, it gives me this region. That immediately gives us the range for r and theta. So, like I mentioned, theta will be between angles. In this case, it's between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Remember, 0, pi, minus pi over 2, pi over 2, 2 pi, right? So, the full circle rotation will be from 0 to 2 pi. Half circle rotation from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 in this case. R is not a fixed number. R has to fill in all of this area. So all these uh, R's will have to fill in the area. Thus, R is ranging. The smallest R will be 0. The biggest R will be this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. What is the radius of the circle? 2. So we can finish building the integral. So I would say, step 1, sketch the graph. Step two, from the graph, figure out the borders, limits of integrations for the integral. Step three, write down the integral. Always start writing down with r, dr, the theta, like a pirate. Now you will not make a mistake. Go back to your function. My function is e to the minus x squared minus y squared. That is e to the minus r squared. e to the minus r squared. Theta is outside from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 that is theta r is inside from 0 to 2 and you can start integrating 
so you already built the integral and it is correct this integral is easier to integrate than the one we had before and that's why polar coordinates are so useful how to integrate integrals like these we learned them already before we need to use u substitution because this part if you call it u uh, gives you as a derivative something almost as r dr so i'll write down let u be minus r squared then du is minus 2r dr if you want you can solve for this i usually do it a different way i teach it in my video called u substitution some students like solving so r dr will be du over minus 2 you're dividing by minus 2r now we are integrating only the inner integral with respect to r so you have to change only 0 and 2 limits of integrations 0 becomes 0 because um, I will need to plug this this and this new limits of integrations since u is minus r squared uh, 0 becomes 0 2 when r is 2 u will be, will be minus 4 that is my u substitution what is this u substitution this helps me to change the integral inside so integral outside is keep waiting the theta from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 e to the minus r square becomes e to the u perfect r dr from over here is du divided by negative one half which i can kick out outside of the integral now it becomes a very simple oh wait so there's a second integral inside let me put it into a different color it's du an integral with respect to u where u is from zero is zero two is minus four the negative u substitution over here made the limits of integration to be from 0 to minus 4. So if you choose u to be r squared, it probably will be from 4 to 0. So let's finish integrating. Negative 1 half is waiting. d theta is waiting. Integral of u gives you, uh, e to the u gives you e to the u. Plug 0 and minus 4. You can start skipping this step if you do it too often. And plug right away it will make the whole process faster minus pi over 2 and less writing pi over 2 minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 it's going to be e plugging minus 4 minus 1 because e to the 0 is not a 0 it is 1 now there's no variable with respect to theta and you know what it means it means it's going to give you theta plug pi over 2 and minus minus pi over 2 so every time you don't have a variable the answer will be the size the length of the interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 the length is pi over 2 minus minus pi over 2 which is basically theta and then we're plugging in top minus the bottom so where e to the minus 4 minus 1 and my negative 1 half were constants. The final answer is going to be e to the minus 4 minus 1. This is 2 times pi over 2, which is just pi. And uh, let me check with my notes. It's going to be minus pi over 2 e to the minus 4 minus 1 matches my notes. So the work is completed correctly and it is amazing. Check everything, make sure you understand what I just did. I'm trying to go a little bit fast because some student told me that I'm too slow in my videos and they have to speed it up. But uh, I don't know, we'll see which one you like more. I'm kind of very flexible about that. So practice more and see you in my next video.